In another world, things change. Ban Ban and his male friends Jumbo Josh, Stinger Flynn, Sheriff Toadster, and Captain Fiddles all begin to transform. Their eyelashes grow, their lips become plump and covered in lipstick, their claws grow pretty painted fingernails, and on their heads grow bright pink bows. Why have the Ban Ban gang transformed into girls? And will this make them any less dangerous? It all started by the sound of something scurrying down the corridor after them. The four teens all scattered as quickly as they could, each of them headed in different directions, too scared to think clearly, and instead choosing to run as far away as they could get and as fast as humanly possible. Whether they were about to somehow find an exit to get away to safety, or if they'd stay trapped in a deeper part of this strange place, was impossible to know for sure. All the four of them could think of doing was getting away from whatever was chasing after them. They'd all foolishly thought it was just one single monster coming to get them, but little did they realize there was a whole host of bizarre, brightly colored pursuers, and each one went after a different one of their friends as they found themselves lost in the dimly lit maze of Ban Ban's kindergarten. Casey ran down one of the corridors passing murals that had been painted on the walls of a gaggle of creatures all grinning unsettlingly. If she had time to slow down and take in the picture fully, she would have noticed that these weren't the Ban Ban and Friends gang that she remembered from her childhood, and neither were the monsters chasing her and the others. She turned the corridor to the creativity room and tried to find a hiding spot. She just needed something, anything that she could get behind or crawl under so she'd be concealed from the creature that was still coming after her down the corridor. A huge painting of the exact same creature was staring at her from the wall, grinning ear to ear with a wide, unnerving smile, like the mural itself was taunting her, reminding Casey that the real thing was getting closer and closer. Right next to it was a whiteboard with a warning scribbled on its surface, run for your lives. Scattered around the creativity room were a number of small plastic tables and chairs, all brightly colored and designed for smaller kids to sit on. Casey was way too big for them, but she had no other options. They would just have to do. Moving as quickly as she could, she stacked as many of the lightweight chairs and tables in the entryway to the room, trying hurriedly to create a makeshift barricade. It was flimsy at best, barely much of an obstacle, but it was all she could think to do to deter the creature coming after her. And after all, this was the creativity room. Making a barricade was certainly a creative choice given the circumstances. In the far corner was a bigger desk, the kind an adult would sit at, probably a teacher. It was the only hiding spot in the room, and having completed her plastic furniture barricade, Casey dove underneath it and tucked her knees under her chin, curling up into a frightened ball. But in her moment of quick thinking, Casey had overlooked one crucial detail. The chairs and the tables had been spread out around the room when she arrived, and now they were all stacked at the entrance. The fact that they'd been moved around told her pursuer exactly where she was. The barricade would be a dead giveaway. Suddenly, there came the noise of all the chairs and tables clattering to the floor as something came bursting through the barricade. Casey clamped one of her hands over her mouth to keep a startled scream from escaping and muffling the sounds of her panicked breathing. From under the grown-up sized desk, she could hear the sound of something padding around, pacing the edges of the creativity room. There were few other places to check, but Casey had only been able to find one hiding spot, the desk she was currently curled under, so she realized that the monster couldn't have been still searching for her. There was only one place she could be and they both knew it, and that meant it was taunting her. She peeked out from under the desk, glancing ever so slightly at the entrance. Scattered across the floor were the discarded remains of her ill-fated barricade, strewn around like plastic rubble, but if she was quick, she could use the creature's arrogance against it. Listening out, trying to detect how far away it was, Casey waited until the monster sounded like it was at the far end of the room. Her knees were trembling, her hands sweaty, as she got herself ready to make a dash. Don't look at her, she reminded herself. If you're looking at her, then you're not looking at where you're going. Head back the way you came and get out. Find the others if you can, but don't worry about getting home. Focus on what's in front of you, not what's running up behind you. With a deep breath to ready herself, Casey rushed out from under the desk. Immediately, she heard the scrabbling sound of the monster darting across the floor of the creativity room toward her. Even though she tried her best not to, she couldn't help but get a tiny, momentary glance just catching the red humanoid shape out of the side of her eye. That split-second look was all it took for Casey to miscalculate one of her steps. Her sneaker caught on one of the plastic chairs, and she stumbled, tripping over and coming crashing down to the floor. She tried to get back up, only to slip. She screamed as she felt something grab her ankle and turned to see the terrifying face of Ban Ban, who was dragging her back toward the creativity room before she could get away. 
but there was something different about this band band to the one Casey remembered from all those years ago. This band band was a girl? It all started not even half an hour ago, before they'd all found themselves being chased around a nightmarish version of their old kindergarten. Casey and her friends had just been spending a boring night after school trying to find something entertaining that they could all do to occupy their time. Carlos had been the one to suggest to try to get inside Ban Ban's kindergarten after dark. He'd heard a few spooky rumors being passed around about that old place. Some of the other kids at school said it was haunted, that nobody who ever went in there came back the same. Others said that it had a curse on it, that if the kids were there at a certain time, all the kindergarten's monster mascots come to life and try to turn any intruders into more of them. Both Casey and Kelly had scoffed at it, saying those were just silly stories to get cheap scares out of people. They all remembered going to that same kindergarten when they'd been much younger, and there was nothing spooky about it. The Ban Ban and Friends gang were just colorful characters that taught them basic stuff at an early age, and made it fun while doing it. Kelly even pointed out that she knew the real reason the place had shut down all those years ago. It wasn't because of missing kids or anything like that. Her mom had told her that Ban Ban's kindergarten had been closed after a lawsuit from a big toy manufacturing company. They'd found out that the Ban Ban gang were way too similar to some of the toys they made, so they'd sent a letter telling the kindergarten owners either pay up or change their characters. Since they didn't want to do either, the toy company sued them, and Ban Ban's kindergarten shut its doors for good. Kelly and Kenny's mom had only explained the whole ordeal because she'd been the paralegal for one of the toy company's expensive lawyers. Kenny yawned, bored by the story, and then complained that he was fed up with just sitting around doing nothing fun. He had said that Carlos's suggestion sounded like it might be a little spooky, even if they all knew there was nothing scary about Ban Ban's kindergarten, right? And besides, it'd be fun to go back there and see it in the dark, and also reminisce about when they were little. What was the worst that could happen? Sneaking in had been pretty easy. The whole building was abandoned, and while none of the four friends were exactly masters at breaking and entering, they'd managed to squeeze through a gap between a pair of fire doors at the back of the kindergarten. Inside, everything was almost pitch black, but Carlos had planned ahead, producing a flashlight from his backpack. Together, the four of them wandered freely around what had once been their kindergarten, the place where they'd spent some of the earliest moments in their childhoods. But it looked a lot different at night, and after so many years of staying empty. Looking around, Casey couldn't help but feel sad. It just reminded her that those early days were all already in the past, and there was no going back. Suddenly, the group realized that Kenny had wandered off. Concerned, they all started looking for him, fumbling around in the dark. Kelly grumbled, making it clear how frustrated she was at her twin brother for leaving them all to go and explore on his own. She told the others that if Kenny so much as tripped and hurt himself in any way, he'd tell their parents straight away. And even worse, he'd find some way to pin the blame on Kelly even though he'd been the one who wanted to come here. As they looked around for their missing friend, Casey, Kelly, and Carlos passed a big painted mural of Ban Ban characters. For the first time since arriving at the old abandoned kindergarten, they could recall some of the old memories from when they used to come here. Everyone had a favorite one among the cast of colorful characters. There was Jumbo Josh, the big green monster. He was that color because he taught the kids to eat up their veggies. Although Carlos had always hated vegetables, he inexplicably loved Jumbo Josh. Maybe because he was the biggest monster and that meant Carlos thought he was the strongest. Then there was Slow Celine, a big yellow snail. Her motto was although she might have been slow, she was quick to lend a hand to anyone in need. Opilla Bird was up on the wall with the rest of the group too. A big pink bird who encouraged the kids to smile. Ban Balina had always been Kelly's favorite. This white monster was all about spreading kindness, and was the female equivalent of Ban Ban. Then there were all the other characters too. Sheriff Toadster was a gigantic gray frog with a huge smile. Stinger Flynn, the orange jellyfish, who had so many arms he could help many people. And Captain Fiddles, the short blue one who didn't really have a lesson to teach, he just said Ooga Booga a lot. But then there was always the main monster himself, Ban Ban. He'd always been Casey's favorite because of his motto, sharing is caring. Suddenly, Kenny reappeared from around the corner, frightening the others. He whispered to them to come with him, saying he'd found something weird and cool, and that they all needed to come and check it out. The four of them all followed Kenny, with his sister scolding him for running off in the first place, but he insisted that it'd be worth it once he showed them all what he'd discovered. And he wasn't wrong either. Not one of them knew what to say or even what to think when they turned the corner and found themselves staring at what could only be described as a portal. Hovering a few inches off the ground was something strange and glowing. It seemed to be without form, not at all resembling anything even remotely familiar, and never holding a particular shape for very long. Its surface was reflective, not quite as clear as a mirror would be, closer to water with the way ripples cascaded across it as it moved. 
The two boys were already searching for something to throw through it, of course, scouring the room for anything nearby. As they looked around, Carlos got within a few steps of the portal and told the others that it looked like he could see the same room in the kindergarten as the one they were currently in, like it was being reflected back. But the second he took one step too far, he quickly found himself getting a much closer look than he'd ever wanted. The portal shuddered, more and more ripples crossing its surface. Some invisible force was pulling Carlos closer to it, and he called all the others for help. Casey, Kelly, and Kenny all grabbed onto him by his arms, but whatever was pulling Carlos closer to the portal was too strong, and soon all three of them could feel their shoes slipping across the floor. They were being dragged closer and closer until all four of the friends fell through the shiny surface. With a thump, they landed in a heap on the other side, heads spinning and feeling a little bit sick like they'd just stepped off a roller coaster that spins you upside down. It was only after a few moments of gripping their heads and stomachs, waiting for the awful, nauseating sensations to come to a stop, that the group realized the portal looked different from this side. It was still solid, much more like a mirror than the constantly shifting one they'd arrived through. Casey even stepped closer to it, expecting to be pulled back through and reappear back where they'd started, but nothing happened. It was as if it was locked from this side just hovering in the air. As the group looked around, they quickly realized they were in what at first glance appeared to be the same room of the kindergarten as they were in before, but something was off. There were weird differences that made each one of them feel unsettled, and that wasn't just the nausea still wearing off. The room was much cleaner, not brand new by any means, but much closer to the pristine condition than their disused kindergarten had looked a moment ago. In fact, it was a lot closer to what they remembered Ban Ban's kindergarten being like before it had shut down. But Kelly was the first to notice that there was something off about the murals of the characters too. They'd been changed. All the ones who the group remembered being boys, Jumbo Josh, Captain Fiddle, Stinger Flynn, Sheriff Toadster, and even Ban Ban had all suddenly become girls. It was certainly a strange situation, but luckily the four friends had seen enough science fiction movies to quickly get an understanding of what had happened. The place they were now seemingly stranded in only looked like their old kindergarten but was actually another version of it. They were in a completely different universe, one with an all-girl Ban Ban and friends gang. And that wasn't the only big difference. The group were trying their best to keep their cool and figure out a way to get back to the right side of the portal. Kelly started panicking pretty quickly, causing Kenny to try his best to comfort her. However, it was just then that the sounds of disembodied children's laughter echoed from somewhere in the kindergarten. Was this place still open? Casey suggested a theory that maybe, in this universe, Ban Ban's kindergarten never shut down. Carlos pointed out that it should still be closed at this time, though, and the idea of someone hanging out after it was closed creeped him out. Immediately, Casey threw back the question of what made him think that time moved at the same pace in this universe. They could have been a few hours behind, like in a different time zone. In response, Carlos pointed at the clock on the wall that read 8 o'clock in the evening, the same sort of time they'd left in their universe. Before they could continue bickering any further, Kenny told them both to drop the subject. He posed the question of whether they should go and look for the source of the laughter or not. On the one hand, it could be anything, just because it sounded like children laughing didn't mean that it was. On the other hand, if they went looking, they might find some way of getting out of the kindergarten. Maybe if they were lucky, they'd stumble across a portal back to their dimension. But they didn't get a chance to make a decision. A louder, much closer sound startled the four friends. Something had come bursting through a door and was creating the rumble of footsteps. They were getting louder, drawing nearer, and getting faster with each passing second until, giving into her panic, Kelly raced off. Kenny wasn't far behind her, and both Carlos and Casey were doing the same only a second later. The Ban Ban girls were alive. The kindergarten's monster mascots, once designed to be lovable and harmless, had somehow come to life and turned feral. Sniffing out the group of friends now wandering around their home, all the monsters had come barreling out of their hiding places to chase down their prey. Leading the charge was the female Ban Ban, with her twin sister Ban Balina right beside her. They had their sights set on Casey, and the red leader of the gang started chasing her toward the creativity room while the rest of the monstrous mascots went after the other three, splitting the friends up and chasing them into different areas of the kindergarten. Carlos ran as fast as he physically could away from the loud, monstrous roar coming from behind him. A terrifying green giant was racing after him, hot on his heels as it stomped down the corridor. It was Jumbo Josie, this world's version of his former favorite Jumbo Josh. The menacing mascot had two huge fists that she used to move around like an angry gorilla. Although Jumbo Josie really lived up to the first part of her name, she was easily twice as big and much stronger. As he ran, Carlos could feel the force of her fists hitting the floor, sending tremors up that almost caused him to trip. 
Up ahead, there looked like there might be a way out. It was an elevator, and Carlos rushed over to the button to call it, hoping more than anything that it was already on this floor. All he needed was to put some distance between himself and Jumbo Josie, and he'd be able to stay out of her reach. He pushed the button. Nothing happened. He looked up and saw an arrow pointing upwards, indicating that the elevator was on its way up to this floor. Carlos started frantically pushing the button over and over again, faster and faster, hoping that it would make it appear before Jumbo Josie caught him. Carlos looked over his shoulder. The huge green monster was still charging right at him, slamming both her big fists into the floor as she got closer. Suddenly, there was a loud ding that startled Carlos. To his relief, the elevator door slid open. He heard another mighty roar from Jumbo Josie and turned again. He got a fright to see that she was almost right behind him, ready to bring all her strength smashing down on Carlos in one heavy swing that would crush him in an instant. He darted into the elevator, just at the right second. The door shut smoothly behind him, right as Jumbo Josie's fists came down through the air and smashed the spot where Carlos had been standing only a second ago. But the chase wasn't over. With a deafening, crashing sound, Jumbo Josie started hammering both fists against the elevator doors. Carlos hoped they would hold, but he quickly realized to his horror the metal was starting to buckle under Josie's punches. He had an idea, something he'd seen in an old Christmas movie he'd stayed up to watch the previous year that his mom said he was way too young to see. Carlos pushed the button to take the elevator down to the next floor, but as it started to move, he pressed another, the emergency stop button. The elevator's brakes brought him to a halt, and Carlos waited. Above him, he heard Jumbo Josie break through the doors above and come falling a few feet down the elevator shaft. She landed on top of the elevator cab with a crunch, and then Carlos pressed the button to deactivate the emergency stop. When the elevator arrived at the next floor down, he dashed out, leaving Jumbo Josie trapped in the elevator shaft. Meanwhile, having turned down a different corridor as they ran away, Kelly and Kenny seemed to have outrun the rest of the monsters. The twins had gotten worried for a moment when they found a door blocking their path, but they managed to work together to get it open. After it shut behind them, they both breathed a shared sigh of relief, thinking they were at least cut off from the colorful, creepy mascots for the time being. Or so they thought. Immediately, Kenny checked that his sister was okay, and while they were both frightened, Kelly seemed to be in less of a state of sheer panic now. They both agreed that the best thing to do was try and find another portal back home, then work on finding Casey and Carlos afterwards. Once they'd all been reunited, the four of them could all leave and get back to their own dimension, where, thankfully, there were no living Ban Ban mascots. However, as they began to cautiously make their way through the various corridors of the kindergarten at a slower pace, the two twins didn't realize that there was something watching them. Peering around corners, stalking the brother and sister from a distance, was Opilla Bird, her wide, unblinking eyes watching the two of them as they searched high and low for a way out of the kindergarten. It was only when they reached the playground that Kelly and Kenny noticed the monstrous pink bird was watching them. Seeing her caused Kelly to let out a startled scream as she was caught by surprise, but Kenny quickly calmed her down, pointing out that the colorful creature had every opportunity to ambush them. Yet Opilla Bird kept her distance, perhaps because the twins had stuck together and maybe seeing there were two of them against only one of her had intimidated Opilla Bird. Treading carefully, Kenny tried to get closer, only for Opilla Bird to retreat behind a corner. As he jumped around to grab her, she vanished. There was no trace of the feral feathered friend. Hoping they wouldn't be seeing the Opilla Bird anytime again soon, Kenny and Kelly looked around the playground for some way to switch on the power. Even if they could only get one or two of the lights working, that would be a big help in terms of letting them see what was around them. So they got to work. Sure enough, by working together as a team, it didn't take the twins long to get the lights back on, which was when they got a real fright. Now it was no longer dark. The two of them jumped as they were faced with the sight of the universe's female versions of Sheriff Toadster, Stinger Flynn, and Captain Fiddles. Opilla Bird had just been watching them, waiting for her fellow mascots to arrive. Turning to run for their lives, the twins grabbed at each other's hands and leapt into the ball pit. They immediately started to slide downwards, hoping there would be something to break their fall when they reached the bottom. Back in the creativity room, at the very same moment, Ban Ban still had Casey in her grasp. She tried her best to get free, kicking out with both legs as she tried to free herself from the monstrous mascot leader's grip. But as she was dragged across the floor of the room, Casey's flailing arms brushed against one of the plastic chairs that were scattered around from her failed barricade. She reached for one of the chairs, her arms stretching as far as she could to get to it, fingertips just brushing one of the chair's shortened legs. Trying desperately to grab hold of the nearest one, Casey threw her arm out again and felt one of the kids' chairs in her hands. Gripping it tightly as she could, she swung it like a weapon. It struck Ban Ban's arm and knocked it loose, causing her to reel back in pain. 
gripping her hand and giving Casey the chance to get back to her feet. Free again, she raced past Ban Ban and arrived in a stairwell, up or down. She didn't have time to think out both options. It wouldn't take long for the red mascot to catch up with her. Casey made her decision and began hurtling down the stairs, skipping two at a time so she could get to the lower floors faster. Down made more sense. If she made it to the ground floor, there'd be an easier way out of the kindergarten, she hoped. As for a way back home, she couldn't worry about that just yet. First, she had to lose Ban Ban and find her friends. Then, compared to those two challenges, getting back to their own universe would be a walk in the park. As she cleared the bottom few flights of stairs, Casey stepped out into another hallway, on the first floor of this alternate Ban Ban's kindergarten. Like the floor above, there were still plenty of paintings on the walls of the Ban Ban girls, although Casey now knew they weren't as friendly as they looked in their murals. Suddenly, a voice coming from nearby startled her. It was Carlos. He was warning her to get away from the elevator, which was right next to the door leading to the stairwell. Before Casey could ask why, there came a roar from behind the closed elevator doors, followed by a loud crashing. Jumbo Josie was still trapped in there, and none too happy about it either. Any second now, she'd break free and come after them. Both Casey and Carlos turned to run, hoping to find either an exit, the two twins, a portal back home, or all three. As their sneakers squeaked against the floor, they heard a huge smash coming from behind them. As Jumbo Josie ripped open the elevator, and came frantically charging after them. With Jumbo Josie gaining on them, Casey and Carlos needed to find a way out, and fast. But as they turned a corner, they ran head first into the twins. Kenny and Kelly both yelped at their two friends, surprised that they seemed to have just appeared from nowhere, but also glad to see they were unharmed. The group had no time to enjoy their reunion, though. Chasing down the twins were the other mascots. And as if that wasn't bad enough, Ban Ban had just made it down the stairs after Casey and had joined Jumbo Josie in her pursuit. The four friends turned heel and ran as the mob of girly mascot monsters from their early childhood came sprinting after them. They turned down the nearest corridor, making sure they stuck together this time instead of letting the monsters separate them. Casey pointed out a door at the furthest side of the corridor. They rushed toward it, hoping it would be the way out that the four of them had so desperately been searching for. But as they raced inside, each one of them was horrified to discover it was a classroom with only one way in. The same door that all the female Ban Ban characters were now scrambling straight through. The four friends screamed and held each other as they rushed to the other side of the room, the grinning multicolored creatures towering over them as they wished they could all wake up from this nostalgic nightmare. Suddenly, much to the surprise and confusion of Casey, Carlos, Kelly, and Kenny, the Ban Ban girls all stopped in their tracks. They weren't attacking. In fact, it was almost like they were waiting. The group parted to reveal the one missing mascot, Ban Balina. It seemed that in this universe, she was the leader of the gang, not Ban Ban. And as if there hadn't been enough surprises for one day, it turned out that Ban Balina could talk. She calmly told the four friends to calm down, and she apologized for all the confusion. Ban Balina explained that the mascots didn't mean any harm. They were just trying to help their friends find their way home. Casey stood up and challenged her, saying she didn't believe her. The Ban Ban girls had chased all four of them since they had arrived. Bambolina went on to say that it was a matter of urgency that the mascots took them back to the portal that would lead them back to their own universe. If they stayed in this one too long, then it could cause a singularity that would wipe out every universe in existence. Casey Carlos and the twins, Kelly and Kenny, all cautiously started to follow Bambolina and the other colorful characters in her all-girl entourage to the right portal. They walked through the kindergarten, down to the basement, where sure enough, there was the way back home.